In today's video, we'll be talking about the difference between Amazon FBA, affiliate marketing, and dropshipping, so be sure that you stay tuned. What's going on guys, Special Shark to here from beautiful San Diego. In today's video, we'll be talking about the difference between Amazon FBA, dropshipping, and affiliate marketing. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, consider subscribing. This will be an awesome video. Also, drop your comments in the comment section. Let me know what future um, you know, videos you guys would like. From time to time, I'd like at least once a month, I'd like to do videos like those where it's just me and, my, and a whiteboard just kind of tell, you know, teaching you guys about something new or something that I personally like. This specific topic actually was brought up to me by um, you know, one of my followers on Facebook. They were saying that they needed to um, to know you know what I thought about the three different concepts. I have done all three. I will explain to you guys which one I personally do right now. And also, if you do stick around until the end, I will actually tell you guys, um, and I'll make a special announcement, and I'll do a giveaway at the end of this video. So let's go ahead and jump into kind of, you know, take it one by one. So I came up with five different things, right, that they are different and similar, uh, or five different points that I would like to discuss in today's video. So the number one thing that everyone asks, right, when they want to start a business is, is it going to require any upfront capital, right? Do I need to actually invest any of my personal money? Now with private label or Amazon FBA, right? So when I talk about Amazon FBA, I'm going to consider that you guys are doing private label. If you are doing wholesaling or if you are doing, unless if you are doing arbitrage, well, actually, even if you're doing arbitrage, you are going to need some capital. So there are different methods when doing Amazon FBA. And um, depending on which method it is, some need a little bit more capital than others. But for the most part, you are going to need upfront capital when you want to start selling on Amazon or when you're going to do Amazon FBA. Now, dropshipping, you don't exactly need uh, um, upfront capital. Why? Because you know, technically, you're not going to buy the product until you actually sell a product. So let's say I'm going to be selling this, you know, pen plus gear uh, Sharpies from Walmart, right? And I'm going to drop ship them to Amazon.com. I'm going to list them for, I don't know, a set of 20 for $15. I can pick them up for $8 at Walmart. When someone actually orders my product, then I go and I order my product from Amazon, I mean, from Walmart, and then get them shipped to Amazon So or to the customer. So technically... There isn't a whole lot of upfront capital. I mean, yes, you are going to need some money to actually um, buy the product to ship it to your customer, but for the most part, you don't need to buy in bulk like Amazon FBA, right? As far as affiliate marketing, same thing, no um, upfront capital because you're not exactly selling your own product, right? Typically, it's you're you're like a referral person. You're like the middleman with affiliate marketing. That's kind of what it is. It's like really you know, the, the middleman, really, if you, if you wanted to give it a nickname, right? Because I manufacture this, and then you're going to go and, let's say, either if it's a landing page or whatever it is, and then you're going to drive traffic to my product. Every time someone buys my product, you get a cut, right? You get 5%, 10%, 20%, whatever the, the you know, the, the actual um, uh, rate is for that person or that specific product. Now, as far as how passive that's the other thing is that people ask me all the time how much time do i have to put into it? so number one is always how much money number two is how much time you know i have a job um you know i i have a daughter i have a son you know i've got a, you know whatever it is right so it's like well how much time do i have to put into it amazon fba what's cool about it is that it's com not complete i mean nothing is completely passive right nothing like absolutely nothing in this world is completely passive it's a lot more passive than the other concepts because you are sending your inventory into Amazon and Amazon is fulfilling the orders for you. That's the one thing that's cool about it. As far as drop shipping, it's not as passive just because you are fulfilling the orders yourself. So when I go and I buy this product, you have to actually go buy the product off Walmart and send it to me, right? Where Amazon FBA, Amazon is going to do all that for you. Um, affiliate marketing, the same thing because you have to kind of, well, I mean, it's probably more passive than dropshipping, right? Because you, what you're doing is you are, you know, the work is kind of where you have to drive traffic to whatever source it is, right? You have to actually set up these things. And we're going to, I don't want to touch too much about it because we're going to talk about them a little bit further. But you actually have to drive traffic. You have to set up pages. You have to set up links. You have to do all these things. But it's definitely more passive than dropshipping, right? The third thing is 
is it my own, do I have to have my own product? Um, do I sell my own product or not, right? A lot of people go into private label because they want to have their own thing. They feel that attachment like this is my thing, right? Like I came up with it, I designed it, this is my thing. You know, they be, you know, they feel proud of it, right? So that's the cool thing about it. Some people are like, you know what, I don't want the obligation, I don't want to be committed, you know, if I want to, you know, just say peace out, I can do that, right? So you do have your own product, you do, do once again, depending on what concept you go for, if you're going for private label, then you do have your own product. If you are not doing your private label, then it's arbitrage or wholesale, and it's technically not your own product, right? So I guess I can write own or not, right? Because if you're doing arbitrage, if you're doing wholesale, then it's a different story. Um, then drop shipping, it's not your own product. You're not selling your own product. Like, if you're going to drop ship Pen Plus Gear, Pen Plus Gear is not yours. You didn't make Pen Plus Gear, right? Pen Plus Gear created Pen Plus Gear, right? And the same thing with affiliate marketing. You are also not selling your own product because it's not your own product or whatever service, right? Some people, it's a product. So let's say my affiliates, you know, they drive traffic to my programs and they get a cut. You know, it's a it's a, it's a a service or it's, I mean, technically it's a digital product, right? But it's not theirs, you know? They can't, like, it's not physically theirs. They don't own it, right? The other thing is that how easy, like, what if what if it doesn't, you know, what if things don't work out the way I want them to work out, right? What exactly do I do, right? Well, with private label, it's a little bit harder to liquidate just because I suggest my students to buy, you know, not more than 200, 300 units. But let's say you have, even if you have 200 units and that the product just sucks, it's just not going to sell. Now, it shouldn't suck because you should have someone to analyze it for you. But if you do, it's harder to liquidate than the other two just because you do have the inventory in stock, right? Dropshipping, easy to liquidate. You know, you create a listing or you're not even creating a listing most of the time. If you're doing Shopify dropshipping, let's say you do the website, whatever, I'm not sure what the, 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 you know, the investment for that is maybe a couple hundred dollars or not even. It doesn't work out. You can always swap out new inventory because it's not, you know, you don't own it. So it's easy to liquidate, right? And the same thing with affiliate marketing. You are affiliate marketing. You are driving traffic to someone else's product. It doesn't work out. Peace. Go find you another product, right? Cool. Now, easy to scale. Now, another, you know, one of the last questions people ask is, okay, cool. So I, you know, I, I mean, yeah, sure, I can make, you know, a couple thousand dollars, but can I make 10,000, 20,000, 50, 100, 200, 1 million, right? Can I get to those numbers and how can I? Amazon FBA is going to be the easiest to scale just because you are not fulfilling the orders yourself. You are sending the inventory to FBA and FBA is going to worry about all that, right? They're going to do all the, you know, the hustle and the fussle and the puzzle for you. You don't have to worry about that. So if you have a million units in, 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 in Amazon and if you're selling a million units a day, it doesn't matter, right? The more you sell, the more profits you make. Amazon is going to worry about all that. Drop shipping. Number one, you need to, you're actually going to fulfill the orders for you or you hire someone to fulfill for you. What if they go sick? What if they have to go on vacation? You have to, you are responsible, right? Otherwise, an FBA, Amazon is responsible. Also, for you to scale, for you to even start this business, you need to drive traffic to whatever the hell it is, right? If you're selling on Amazon, cool. Amazon already has the traffic, but a lot of people don't drop ship on Amazon. A lot of people drop ship on Shopify, right? So you have to know funnels. You have to know how to do ads, whether if it's Facebook ads, influencer marketing on Instagram, whatever it is, Google AdWords, whatever it is, you need to know these things. You need to know Facebook ads, you need to know Instagram ads, you need to know AdWords, you need to know how to do influencer marketing, you need to know all that stuff, and also how to create funnels and how to create a website. Where with Amazon FBA, you don't need to know all that because Amazon already brings all the traffic. All you got to do is just put the right product in front of the right eyes, right? Affiliate marketing, even it's probably the hardest out of all to scale, right? Although, you because with affiliate marketing, you also might need to do YouTube, you know, especially if it's like uh, like if you are uh, doing like physical products or even digital products, you know, you have my I've seen a lot of affiliates that do um, like reviews, you know, they'll like review a product, let's say they'll take a course and then they'll go through it and then they'll review that course or let's say a camera or whatever, right? A lot of people use YouTube for affiliate marketing. Depending on what your strategy is, you know, you need to know at least ads or, at, you know, at some platform level, mostly Amazon, I mean, uh, Facebook, 
probably Google AdWords, and then also a lot of people use Instagram influencers to drive traffic to whatever product or service they are selling. Another thing about these two is that you cannot control, because you don't own the product, you cannot control the quality, you cannot control the actual product, you also cannot control the um, the inventory. Now, if it was a, a, um, a uh, what do you call it, if it was a digital product, that's a different story, there is no control, there is no inventory needed, but also you can't control the quality of the customer service. So let's say if you are driving traffic to someone's uh, course, right? Well, what if the people need help, right? They're going to come up to you or they're going to come up to your personal profiles, your, you know, the person that actually they trusted to, 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 to sell on this stuff and say, hey, what the hell? Like, you know, what's going on here? And the problem is you can't control it, right? So yes, having your own product sometimes is, is a little risky. Sometimes it's a little uh, um, scary, but you can control the quality, you can control everything. You can order, right? And especially if you're doing private label, you can order as many as you want for as long as you want, especially if it's selling. You can, I mean, you can scale it to the moon and that's the cool thing about Amazon FBA that it's a little bit more difficult to do with those two. Now, thank you very much for tuning in. I really hope that you guys found value in this video. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Also share it with your friends and consider subscribing to my channel if it is your first time on this channel. Now, the question of the day, do you do any of those three methods? If it's Amazon affiliate, dropshipping or affiliate marketing. If you do, please drop it in the comment section. Also, if you don't, which one are you considering and why are you considering it, right? Let us know in the comment section. Let us know what you guys think. Now, last but not least, the announcement for the day, guys, in the comment section, in the link section below, or in the description below, the first link is going to be to a free workshop where I'm going to teach you exactly step-by-step step how to sell on Amazon, how I do what I do, and how I was able to make over $250,000 per month at our highest month selling on Amazon completely hands-free. So be sure to check out that link. It's going to be the first link in the description below. Aside from that, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for tuning in. You all have a great day and take care.